in the modeling industry, beauty isn't what fits the standard, it's what rises above it. And Sarah McDaniel had one condition that has helped her soar over her competition. And if we can get a close up to the young lady's eyes right here, Jim, take a look at her eyes. But staying on top can feel like treading water, especially when rumors threaten to bring you down. I feel so uncomfortable watching her. She's fucked unless she comes clean. When Sarah's own father tries to expose her, she's always been a liar, cheater, and thief, and always will be. And old photos resurface, the lengths this model will go to keep up her condition could cost her everything. Look. Can you see? It's black. Completely black. An illegal procedure may have happened and the public is in disbelief. When everyone's telling a different story, how do you separate what's real from what's fake? Before we get into the story, we'd like to thank our sponsor for today's video, Private Internet Access. With over 30 million downloads and a no-logs policy that has been proven in court, Private Internet Access is the world's most transparent VPN provider. When you use Private Internet Access, your information travels through an encrypted tunnel to ensure your data remains secure. This way, you can hide your IP address and keep your digital life away from the prying eyes of your internet service providers, network administrators, and government censors. However, it's not all about privacy and security. Since private internet access is compatible with all major streaming services, you can use it to watch movies and television shows from all around the world. What's more, this is one of the few VPNs that fully supports P2P file sharing and torrenting, so you know your downloads will be secure. Private internet access is available for all operating systems, from Windows to macOS, iOS, Android, and many more. Plus, it comes with the added bonus of blocking ads, trackers, and malicious websites, making your online experience on any device much safer. If you want to start enjoying all the benefits of private internet access, this is a perfect time, as we have a special discount for you. Go to privateinternetaccess.com slash spill to get 82% off and three extra months for free on the two-year plan. That's less than $3 per month for a private digital life. Now back to the story. If what makes you unique is what makes you special, Sarah McDaniel was in a league of her own. Her signature look has captured the attention of millions and allowed her to live a life straight out of an Instagram post. But when allegations came out that Sarah's success is based on a lie, everything from the model's social media following to her sudden trip to India will come under the scrutiny of the internet. Sarah McDaniel, does that name ring any bells? Maybe you've seen it printed on the cover of a magazine or accredited for a music video, or maybe you're one of her 1.5 million followers on Instagram. It's possible but you're more likely to recognize the model from her unique stare. In an industry that takes beauty to its extremes, Sarah's eyes, one blue and one brown, are what set her apart. It's a phenomenon known as heterochromia iridum that Sarah credits for her look, and it's what the 26-year-old has built her career on, and quite the career it's been. Sarah has popped up everywhere, from music videos for G-Eazy and Mark Ronson, to MTV's Spencer Pratt Will Heal You, where she tried to get a witch to heal her anxiety and back pain. I deal a lot with anxiety anxiety with mm -hmm. uh, pretty much everything in my life. I'm just a very anxious person. But perhaps the biggest moment of the Californian's career was when she appeared on the cover of Playboy's historic first non-nude issue in 2016. The safer work concept was an effort by the publication to appeal to a younger crowd, and the cover, shot to resemble a Snapchat selfie spotlighting social media fixture Sarah, was the cherry on top. This gig landed Sarah a slot on The Late Night Show with Stephen Colbert, where she taught the host how to find his angle and take the perfect selfie. The model's career was just beginning. But when Sarah opened up about her experience with heterochromia a couple of years later, the response wasn't what anybody expected. Forbes had previously covered Sarah's heterochromia following her Playboy cover, but the model hadn't gone into detail about her experience with the condition. They're just eyes, Sarah told Forbes. Despite Sarah's hesitancy to discuss her eyes, they were celebrated by her fans. Many drew fan art to pay homage to the model. Even popular artist Sarah Fleur used Sarah as a muse. In 2018, Sarah decided to go in-depth about her experience as a model with heterochromia in an interview with Stylecaster. The journalist described the model's eyes as a unique feature, with one being a warm chocolate brown and the other a brilliant blue-green. 
The article went into a typical Q&A style, with lighthearted questions and seemingly thought-out responses. It's clear neither interviewer nor interviewee had any idea what the aftermath of this article would be. How could they? In the interview, Sarah claimed that even as a child, schoolmates singled her out for her eyes. People started asking me if they were contacts or if they were fake, and it didn't make me feel good at first. I felt like I had to explain myself a lot. I wanted to just be normal and not answer those kinds of questions every day. But she admitted her eyes weren't the only thing that made her a target for ridicule from her peers. I was kind of overweight, my teeth were not so straight, and I was really, really socially awkward. I'd moved every year since I was eight. I didn't understand the whole social realm of things, so I kind of kept to myself. I also wore the same whale t-shirt every day that I thought was really cool, so people had their pick of things to make fun of me for. As we know, Sarah grew into her looks and began modeling in her teen years. Still, Sarah said she was envious of people like her mother with her striking and matching green eyes. The modeling industry did nothing to ease Sarah's insecurities. Her heterochromia was considered to be a burden by the agency she worked with. One agent even told her to wear a contact so her eyes would match and not draw attention away from the clothing she modeled. She was told to blend in, not stand out. My agency decided I would be more widely accepted if I was normal, like everybody else, Sarah told Stylecaster. At one point, she said she had to bring her father into her agency to stand up for her. When you're 16 and being told all these things about your body and how you should change it or make it better, you don't really know how to respond to it. You want to listen to these people because they're trying to get you jobs, but when you're at that age and trying to do your best, you don't really know how to navigate all those criticisms. It was the diversity on social media that gave Sarah permission to feel confident with her heterochromia. I think social media was ultimately the thing that pushed me into embracing it. There are a lot of people on Instagram now embracing their different bodies. It's really beautiful. As a whole, the article was flattering. Sarah was painted as a role model who not only stood up for what made her unique, but built a career off of it. If only it weren't for that pesky editor's note, the one that left Sarah's career hanging in the balance and readers feeling duped. It read, After publishing this story, we received many comments that McDaniel's claim of being born with heterochromia iridum may be false. We reached out to McDaniel's representative, who vehemently denied that her client has misrepresented herself at any time and maintains that McDaniel was born with the condition. The model's eyes that had previously attracted fascination were now attracting criticism. But Sarah didn't abandon her story. She doubled down. Not only did she educate her audience on heterochromia, There are so many different types of heterochromia. A lot of people think it's just the eyes, but in actual reality, it can be your skin pigmentation or your hair it can be different colors. Anything really on your body could have a simple lack of melanin in one part. But she also positioned herself as the face of the condition. It's cool to have it because I used to hate it when I was younger. I used to get made fun of for it a lot. Being in the modeling world and kind of going through life in this industry, I've realized it's what sets me apart. All Although a lot of people don't like it and a lot of people don't like that I enhance it, I think that it's beautiful. Looking back on her appearance on The Late Night Show with Stephen Colbert. You have something called heterochromia iridum, is yeah. that what it is? Yes. And if we can get a close up the young lady's eyes right here, Jim, take a look at her eyes. Many claimed they can see the contact lens during this close-up, and Colbert had the same question the rest of America did. At times it's very annoying because I get asked a lot, like, is it fake, and everyone else, everyone's always like, that's the only thing everyone That's what I just asked you, it. I just asked you yeah. if it's fake. But yeah, exactly, everyone, mm -hmm. that's the only thing everyone, notice, everyone notices, I wish they would pay attention to other things about me rather than just that one thing. But it was clear viewers weren't going to let that one thing go, especially when they believed that one thing was a lie. I don't care if people change their eye color. It's an issue when you claim you have a condition you don't. Sis, just say you have contacts in. I feel so uncomfortable watching her fake heterochromia. Someone also pointed out that Sarah couldn't pronounce the condition she claimed to have. Heterochromia iridium. LMAO bitch, it's heterochromia iridum. This girl claims to have it since childhood and can't even say it right, lol. As for those who did have heterochromia, they didn't take kindly to the idea that someone would fake the condition. My actual mutated eye compared to Sarah McDaniel's fake contact lens. That's such bull She derived her fame from being fake. And the model's critics continued to find moments where they claimed a contact was visible, like in Mark Ronson's Summer Breeze music video. Eventually, an Instagram was created with posts dedicated to exposing Sarah. Brown iris beneath a blue contact lens. 
Larger blue iris with a fixed pupil that does not react the same as the brown iris pupil due to color contact lens. And those who believed Sarah was faking her heterochromia weren't going to stop at call-out posts. They wanted to make the people who worked with Sarah aware of her alleged lie and shame them if they already knew. This person claimed they contacted Sarah's agency to voice their concerns and questions. Did you make your model wear one contact so she can get more jobs? Do you understand what kind of damage that can be caused by a contact lenses? Poor thing. What kind of message are you sending to a younger generation? Lie about your physical appearance? Do everything to be noticed? But how were these people so sure that Sarah was lying about her heterochromia? Let's take a closer look into the eye that was causing so much controversy. When you get past Sarah's hypnotizing stare, you start to notice a difference between the model's two eyes that has nothing to do with color. Sarah's blue iris is larger than her brown iris. Notice how the sclera, the white of the eye, is more visible under Sarah's brown eye. Even the shapes of each iris appear to be different, and when Sarah looks to the side, the contrast in size is all the more apparent. But newer images of the supermodel suggest a change in the eye that should be anatomically impossible. Sarah's blue iris has shrunk. Not only has the size changed, but the blue iris also appears to be a different shade of blue. Some of these changes could be courtesy of Photoshop. Given the unnatural slant at the top left of the blue iris, it appears the images have been at least partially edited. So, how can we tell the difference between editing and contacts? Thankfully, there are certain giveaways that make contacts stand out. Modifying your appearance can be a form of expression, and contacts make it easy. Just use the proper cleaning tools and you can go from brown eye to blue eyed in seconds. Given their widespread availability and user-friendly reputation, it's not surprising that contacts like these have been compared to Sarah's blue eye. But what makes contacts look unnatural? It comes down to three things, limbal rings, collagen fibers, and pupils. A limbal ring is that dark ring that borders some people's iris. They are more pronounced in babies and often thin as we age, though they're more likely to stay somewhat prominent in lighter eyes. Contacts often have a thick limbal ring that completely surrounds the eye. This defined look is unnerving on adults who naturally have softer limbal rings that only surround part of the eye. But a contact's inadequacy doesn't stop at limbal rings. Collagen fibers are what give each iris its unique pattern. They are found at the back layer of the eye and have a spring-like quality that allows the pupil to expand and contract. The collagen fibers and contacts, like the limbal ring, are overly prominent. Lastly, let's talk about the pupil that seemingly endless black hole at the center of our eye. The pupil comes in a range of sizes, and every pupil shrinks and expands daily due to the surrounding lighting conditions. Unfortunately, contacts just can't account for every pupil size. So, if the area in a contact designated for your pupil is too big, your real iris will be exposed. But for some people, unreal is exactly the look they're going for. Characters in anime often have unrealistically round and bright eyes that don't exist in the real world. When people cosplay as these characters, contacts are the closest they can get to fiction. But for those who want a more human look, there are increasingly realistic options. Many contacts now have softer limbal rings and collagen fillers to better replicate the natural anatomy of an eye. The pupil area can still expose the natural iris, but in certain lights, colored contacts can go undetected. So, how can we spot the difference between a real eye and a realistic contact? There are some things contacts just can't fully replicate, such as depth. The contact sits on top of the eye, but in a human eye, the iris lies beneath a thin transparent layer called the cornea. There's an important reason for this. The cornea helps control entry of light in the eye, thus protecting the iris and other parts of the eye that are more vulnerable. Contacts can't recreate this depth, and since they're placed over the cornea, they bulge out and cast shadows. All of this makes even the best contacts perceptible. With the help of bright lights, sunlight, and flash photography, spotting contacts can be even easier. In these photos taken with flash, you can see the same lack of depth in Sarah's left eye that you'd see in a contact lens. Under studio lights, you can also see the lack of depth and unnatural pattern to the eye. And in sunlight, you can see the difference in the way Sarah's brown eye plays off the light by reflecting it and showing depth, versus the lack of change in her blue eye. Despite Sarah's recent silence on the subject, she had previously admitted to wearing a contact in 2016, but not for the reason people thought. I wear a contact to enhance partial heterochromia. 
Partial heterochromia is when one or both eyes have an area of color that contrasts with the rest of the eye. Although central heterochromia might be the precise term in Sarah's case, this is when the color that circles the pupil is different from the rest of the iris. In the images where a brown ring is visible around Sarah's pupil, maybe a contact wasn't the culprit. Maybe it was central heterochromia. Could Sarah be faulted for wearing a contact to emphasize her unique trait? People use mascara to enhance their lashes, lipstick to enhance their lips, and bronzer to enhance their bone structure. Why draw the line at eyes? Photographers have also come to Sarah's defense, stating her heterochromia is real. But with Sarah, it's difficult to know where the Photoshop ends and the truth begins. In this unedited photo, you can see Sarah's left eye has brown that surrounds the pupil before fading into blue. It's the same variation in color you'd see in central heterochromia, or a contact. But in Sarah's version of the photo, the brown has been completely removed from the blue eye. There's also more light reflecting off the blue eye to match the brown eye. Aside from the eyes, the model's appearance also appears to be minimally altered. This isn't just one instance of editing photos. This is a consistent trend in Sarah's online content. Her Instagram is littered with edited photos where she removes any trace of brown from her left eye and brightens it to the point that it's a completely different color. It's one thing for an individual to edit their appearance, but why would the agencies Sarah has worked with misrepresent their model and risk damaging their reputation? When you look at Sarah's old agencies, one thing sticks out. They list her eye color as hazel or brown. Even Playboy, the magazine that launched Sarah into the spotlight, had described her eyes as hazel. But why wasn't anyone from Sarah's past coming forward? According to whisperings on the internet, they were. Many commenters that claimed to have known Sarah pre-fame said she was faking heterochromia and they were also voicing new allegations. I've known her IRL since she was 12, can confirm. She actually wore two blue contacts for a while. I guess she got obsessed with heterochromia and started just wearing one blue contact. I was friends with her and I asked her why. She said she liked deformities. She's so fake and not even just her blue eye is fake. Her personality is a mixture of everyone she's ever known. She isn't original at all. A commenter claiming to be an optometrist also chimed in. Even though the iris has been airbrushed to blend better, I can still see the edges of the contact on the white of her eye. Sarah's blue eye was clearly a hot topic for public debate, but an insider was about to come forward with their own allegations about Sarah, and they weren't hiding behind an anonymous profile. In 2017, Sarah's father Gregory posted a throwback photo of his daughter on Instagram. In the photo, it's clear Sarah has brown eyes and the caption confirmed it. My daughter Sarah McDaniel with her real brown eyes. This was only one of the allegations Gregory would voice against his daughter. His following claims weren't just an attack on who Sarah was on the surface, but at the core. Some of his allegations included that he ghostwrote Sarah's journalism pieces, that his daughter lost her manager because of her eye, and that she was a liar, cheater, and thief. He also claimed Sarah was the cause of his divorce with her mother. She pushed my ex into a nasty divorce that didn't need to be. Gregory's posts were deleted, but later he claimed Sarah forced him to take the post down. His most damaging allegation was that Sarah discriminated against LGBTQ people. He wrote, She's my daughter. I love her as that, but I don't like who she is, and I won't see more people be damaged by being naive about the fact they're dealing with a viper, and you will get hurt if you get anywhere near that pretty little homophobic sociopathic snake. When one commenter asked Gregory for further explanation, he didn't hold back. She's a homophobe because her big issue with me is that I'm bi, because she continually calls LGBT people if she's upset with them online, because her Snapchat is just to be offensive, because she believes that any LGBT person is beneath her and contemptible. She sees LGBT relationships, sincere or not, as inferior to straight relationships. If you are LGBT like me, her father, you are cut off, just like if you say one thing constructive to her on Snapchat. During his posting spree, he shared proof of identity, Instagram captions that ranged from hurtful to defamatory, and what appeared to be regret over his damaged relationship with his daughter. I hope Sarah realizes her eye doesn't matter at all. If anything, I think it's a commentary on our society where a girl feels pressure to stand out to the point they compromise even health and reputation. I love Sarah. She's 21. I'm sure at that age my reasoning wasn't fully developed, ruled by insecurity and a need to be accepted above all. I feel horrible and just hope we can rebuild. His social media tirade was so vast that one allegation might have slipped through the cracks if it weren't for what was to come. As for Sarah, she didn't seem to have a response to her father's posts. 
but a fan account posted Sarah's childhood photo of her a few years later with the addition of something blue. It's unclear where this photo surfaced from and if Sarah had anything to do with it. But as Sarah's father proved, the past was hard to cover up. When internet sleuths went digging through Sarah's sister's Facebook, even they must have been unaware of the gold mine they were about to uncover. The model's sister, Zoe, had posted photos of her sister throughout the years, blissfully unaware of the evidence she was providing against her sister's claims of heterochromia. In some photos, Sarah had two brown eyes, and in one, two blue? This status Zoe posted might explain the image. OMG, my sister just put blue contacts in her eyes! Zoe had also posted a close-up of Sarah's left eye, the one that supposedly had at least central heterochromia, but the photo showed an eye that was entirely warm brown. Even a harmless birthday post from Zoe provided critics with further evidence that Sarah had allegedly lied about her condition. Sarah's mother also made a mistake in posting a photo of Sarah with brown eyes, which she must have realized since the post has been deleted. But why would Sarah want to change her eyes? One theory someone voiced online was that Sarah was jealous of her sister's naturally blue eyes. But envy is hardly a reason for the lengths that Sarah's alleged deception went to, and would soon go. Online, Sarah's life was pure escapism. Her Instagram account was a compilation of crystal blue waters, tan skin, and vacation getaways. For many, it was a dream life, but for Sarah, it was a life she had stolen. Not only did Sarah post photos that didn't belong to her, but she failed to credit the original photographers. If a photo could be of Sarah, it became her, through calculated cropping, editing, or blatant theft. But when Sarah was confronted for allegedly stealing an image, she didn't take it well. LMAO, children. Sarah's thieving didn't stop at images. Some alleged she stole another creator's voice. According to this post, Sarah stole content from Rachel Anderson, who went by Steak on Tumblr. She was legitimately copying her tweets, Instagram posts, and even Steak's personal experiences as if they were her own. And when Steak was asked about Sarah, Steak claimed her friends worked with Sarah on a modeling shoot and allegedly witnessed her contacts sliding off. As for Sarah's father's allegation that her Snapchat username was a slur, it appeared the word could be used that way according to a definition from Urban Dictionary during this time. And her use of this term isn't surprising when you see the slur was part of her online vocabulary. And her mother appeared to allow it. But Sarah's online behavior wasn't tolerated by everyone. Sarah attended Leonardo DiCaprio's charity and later called out the event with the hashtag, they don't actually help anything. The Leonardo DiCaprio Foundation raised funds to support worldwide projects focusing on climate change and threatened wildlife and ecosystems such as the Elephant Crisis Fund, Pristine Seas, and Earth Echo International. And during the 2017 event Sarah attended, they raised over 30 million euro to support their mission. The model herself was called out by a friend of DiCaprio, Andre Gelat. The foundation has done a lot. What have you done? And for someone who wanted their flights changed half a dozen times and kept asking for different things, people bent over backwards for you. To post that is so disrespectful. Shame on you. But Sarah's online activity also foreshadowed who she was becoming. In Sarah's Tumblr activity, you can see the beginnings of a fake it till you make it mentality. Like this post she reblogged in 2016. I have bullshit my way through almost two decades of life. And some reblogs are all the more ominous looking back. If you're serious about change, you have to go through uncomfortable situations and stop trying to dodge the process. It's the only way to grow. Sarah also seemed to make her own mistakes in what she uploaded online. In 2017, she allegedly uploaded a photo with brown eyes, then deleted it and re-uploaded the photo with one blue eye. In spring of 2017, she started losing followers, but there's speculation she bought followers to replace what she lost. Everything in Sarah's online presence, from her photos to her follower count, appeared to be manicured and maintained to look perfect. But if perception isn't reality, how far would Sarah go to achieve real change? In 2017, Sarah announced she was going on a trip to India. She made a few Instagram posts about the trip, all of which she later scrubbed from her account. But why make it look like the trip never happened? When she returned from India, her blue eye was noticeably different. It looked more real and the model was showing it off in different lights and in close-up shots. Followers noticed the change and started to voice their theories on the lengths Sarah had gone to achieve this look. 
Nice eye surgery. I don't judge your personal life, but you know that you can go blind. Why can't you just stay natural? Some suggest that she went to a specific eye surgery clinic in India. The clinic offers over 30 variations of blue, so every patient comes out with their ideal shade. Someone claimed the clinic followed Sarah on Instagram, and Sarah followed back. One person believed Sarah was having issues with her alleged implant. According to their theory, when Sarah took a hiatus from social media, she was really going to get her implant fixed. Many of Sarah's followers were amazed by how realistic her eye had become. Her blue eye no longer looks like a contact. You can see the light reflecting like it would do to a real eye. But some noted the limitations of the surgery compared to a real eye. Her pupil will always look weird when it dilates because the implant doesn't change the shape. It still looked like she's wearing a cheap contacts lens. You can see where the implant ends around her pupil. The funniest part is it's a completely different shade of blue to all her other pictures, which varied a lot in themselves depending on which circle lenses she was wearing on a particular day. And it's true, the shades of blue appear to change throughout time. Instagram page CelebFace shared a photo revealing just how drastic the color and iris shape varied over time. Other commenters were concerned about what the long-term harm such an invasive surgery could do to the eye. The eye surgery is known for being super dangerous, even more than the V-line surgery, and you get a clue when you notice which countries perform it. She will lose her eyesight from that eye before she turns 30. But skeptics didn't believe there was enough evidence to suggest she really got the surgery. I don't think she's had the eye surgery. Something would have happened by now. And what was the proof that she had it done? That she was traveling at that time? I think she is still using contact lenses. As word spread about the possibility Sarah had her eyes surgically altered, Sarah's followers began to jump ship, losing hundreds of Instagram followers each day. But why was an alleged iris implant surgery the breaking point for so many? How was this procedure different from fixing any other insecurity? There was a reason Sarah allegedly traveled all the way to India, an almost 24-hour flight from anywhere in her home state. Iris implant surgery is illegal in the U.S. The side effects listed by Miami Health News include eye inflammation and pain, blurred vision, reduced vision, corneal injuries, glaucoma, cataracts, and blindness. Sarah ignored the backlash she was receiving. She continued to model and appeared in a Frank Walker music video in 2018, proudly showing off her eyes in a close-up shot. But Sarah's critics weren't going to be silenced, especially when they believed her operation had put her in serious danger. One person raised concerns about the debilitating effects Sarah's alleged surgery could have on her. I know several people who have used it and the company's results are fake. Eventually, the eyes turn dark dark, almost black, and they have permanent light sensitivity. She's f***ed unless she comes clean. This comment isn't just a scary story, it's backed up by science. The American Academy of Ophthalmology describes iris implant surgery as when an artificial iris made of silicone is folded and inserted into a slit that has been cut into the cornea. Then, the iris is unfolded and adjusted to cover the natural iris. This gives the fake iris depth you can't achieve with a contact. Although the procedure has gained traction as a cosmetic surgery, it was initially an option for people with abnormal irises due to medical conditions or injury. But the complications when a patient goes in with a perfect iris are all the more severe. They have so much more to lose. By 2012, the right eye would turn bloody red, and I just ignored the symptoms. The next few years, the vision went blurry, and it would go in and out. It's my fault. I should have seen a doctor and I didn't, and I thought the vision would come back, and I am now blind in the right eye. Do not do this surgery whatsoever. Due to stories like these, many end up wanting their implants removed, like this patient who is experiencing high pressure, inflammation, and popped blood vessels. Unfortunately, removal involves another surgery, one that can leave the eye permanently altered. This woman had one implant removed and her previous hazel eye was now unrecognizable. Look. Can you see? It's black. Completely black. But inflammation, pressure, irritation, and potential blindness may mean many have no other choice but to get their implant removed. For a surgery that's meant to fix insecurities, it often ends up causing new ones. One alleged ex-doctor from a popular iris implant clinic had one thing to say to those considering the surgery. Shortest answer, just don't do it. Long-term complications are too many. But for Sarah, it's possible this morning is too late.
In this TikTok Sarah posted in 2021, one line of narration sticks out. A dangerous breed, the kind that perceives their own delusions as being real. Sarah has a history of putting her own spin on reality, but it's still unclear if the model has heterochromia that she enhances with a contact. A lot of people don't like it, and a lot of people don't like that I enhance it. Or if she's using a contact to hide the fact she doesn't have heterochromia at all. One thing's certain, if Sarah did get iris implant surgery, she has a lot more at stake than being caught in a lie.